subject today is a peace and prosperity, right? Yep. It's very nice, very dear to me, the subject. Uh, before I start my speech, um, can I just take a few minutes and uh, request everyone to take a couple of long and deep breath with your eyes closed? Yeah. Relax your body and just bring your attention to your breath and just take a long and deep breath. Fill your lungs as much as you can, slowly and gradually. And breathe out as slowly as possible. And as you breathe out, relax your body. Let your mind also be relaxed. You can do it a couple of times. And when you feel relaxed, slowly you may open your eyes. You feel good? Is it relaxing to take a couple of deep breaths? Yeah. Yes? Uh, so peace on the individual levels can be a peace for the society. It is connected with each other. So I was uh, traveling with uh, the founder of the organization, Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji, and we were in the United Nation uh, uh, summit. And uh, it was a similar subject, the peace and prosperity. And the example which he gave, it was so dear to me, like it was so eye opener. And I always like to quote that example. He said that when we are looking for a peace in the society and on the individual level, we have to know that there are three fundamental pillars of the society. One is a business. Second is a religion. Third is politics. And all these three pillars need a transformation. A business, we need to socialize the business. If enterprises think about only the today's profit or the short-term profit, they don't think about the long-term profit or sustainable business, then they try to exploit the society and which creates the problem. So in India, we used to have this corporate social responsibility, which was very much there and all this in different parts of the world, people in parts of the country, people used to Take care of the society in a various way building the hospitals and you know water bodies and various other things now it has become a little fashionable and we call it a csr corporate social responsibility but the purpose remains the same that a business has to take care of the society socialize the business then comes secularize the religion often we see that with the religion becomes dogmatic and a people in that religion, they think that only I have a right to heaven and for my heaven, I can create the hell for others. This is a reason for all the disturbance in the society. We see a lot of intra-religious and inter-religious fight, which is happening all over the world because reason is that that narrow understanding about the religion. So we need to secularize Price the religion. The religion should be all inclusive. Yeah. And the third is spiritualize the politics. Leaders who are there in the helm of affairs, if they don't have that spiritual bent of, of mind, if they try to exploit the society, if they do all the corrupt practices, 
then it is also not good for the society. It also creates the disturbance and which we see in many countries. I remember when I was in Argentina way back in 2003, just a few people, they took away all the money from the economy and overnight the whole economy collapsed. People had money in the bank, but they could not withdraw. And they lose their state of mind. There was no peace. And then it started with all the riots and you know internal conflicts and disturbance and so many things happened. So these three things we must take care. And today when we see that the society is like on one hand, we have aggression and violence, whether it's a domestic violence or the societal violence, which is so prevalent. And on the other hand, there is a depression in the people or it leads to the societal tendency. So the whole society is divided between the aggression and the depression. And we must take care of these two extremes of the society, of the individuals. When I become aggressive, either I hurt to the others or I hurt myself. So nowhere we have taught people how to handle their emotional minds. When they have this disturbance, their frustration and anger and you know, fear and hatred, they don't know how to handle it. Nowhere it has been taught whether in schools or colleges and people go around in the world with all that negative emotions and trauma, which they're experiencing in their mind, they cannot get rid of past. So when we conduct these programs in the, in the prisons and, you know, the criminals and they said, we didn't know how to get rid of our past and we were carrying it throughout our life. And then you put, put us in a prison once, twice, three times, and maybe for a couple of years, but nobody has taught us how to get rid of this. And that is the reason when the people are not experiencing that peace within, they will create the disturbance in the society. So when we are talking about the peace, we have to work on the individual levels. So that inner peace can bring the outer dynamism. And you know, you cannot have prosperity without peace. I give you another example, Venezuela. I was uh, in Venezuela last year with PC, with Shishi. He was invited for the peace negotiation. As of today, Venezuela can be the richest country of the world. They've got five times more oil reserve than the entire Gulf put together. Then they have all the gold mines and natural resources and minerals, but there is so much of disturbance. There is no production, nothing in that country. So in spite of having all the richness, people are feeding. It's like more than 2 million people have migrated from Venezuela to Colombia. Yes, we see this in many parts of the Africa and other countries where we have this um, religious extremisms or you know, uh, conflict between the two races. So you cannot have prosperity without the peace. And for the peace, we have to work on the individual level and here, the role of the spirituality comes from the picture because that spirituality is completely alienated from the society. You know, we are going more towards the, the economical growth and, you know, more of a physical growth. And we have forgotten our own self. We have forgotten people to teach about their own mind, their own self, how to handle it, how to take care of it. And especially this COVID, has given a classic example. You know? So nature has put a pause button on us and by force, the whole world is at home. Here the problem start. People don't know how to be at home, how to be with their own people. And we have seen so many conflicts are going on, so many, you know, uh, separation, divorce cases are filed. Because unless you handle that state of mind, you know, it's very difficult to perform, to be the dynamic outside. So spirituality can definitely give this. And here I would like to, you know, um, differentiate the spirituality with religion. When I say the spirituality, this means the core value, which is there in all the religions, which is the essence of the religion, whether it is a, you know, compassion or empathy or solidarity or love or brotherhood. You know, which we cherish in the world, which we cherish in our own families, which is the essence of all the religion. 
and we must bring out we must bring put this thing into the practices so last year i was in uh, usa and i was invited in google and uh, when i was talking to the hr he said you know we have this program the hr has developed a special program to become more empathetic how our employees can become more empathetic to each other how they can open up their heart to each other and i was like little surprised that you are a hardcore it company why do you need this kind of program so she said something so beautiful she said you know we are a multicultural environment the people come from different parts of the world and we want them to interact with each other because they are working in the team and if they don't work with each other as a team then they remain in their own cocoon the russians will remain with them community and the chinese will be with their own community we want these people to open up and you know interact with each other and that's why we have this program and we call it a spiritual quotient so there was a time people used to talk about the iq and then from iq they came to the eq and now they talk about the sq so whether it is a big enterprises or the society this quotient is not developed and especially after the covid we foresee like we had number of interaction with the united nations and who and unicef and everybody foresee that mental health is going to be the big challenge after the post covid time and here we must take care of it that will bring the prosperity and when we talk about the prosperity even this situation what we call it a crisis can be an opportunity for us but for that we need to prepare our own youth force as we all know that india being a young country but what is the quality of our youth that is more important and when i say the quality that means have we empowered them have we given them enough skills to perform if i compare the india with other countries the skill people in india is only 3% as compared to the germany or as compared to the korea or singapore which is too less more and more people wants to go for the higher education but we cannot put everybody into the higher education we need skilled laborers and when we talk about the industries when we talk about um, the service and sectors everywhere we need a skilled people but because of um, you know a kind of model that people are expecting a freebies they don't want to work and where we see in the other part like china people are working for 17 hours 18 hours and what is our youth doing so we must give that encouragement that self motivated youth will be the assets for the country yeah if they are just go, going on the roads and you know uh, destroying the public properties and they are in that aggression mode we cannot utilize them because they are the assets for the country and where do we expect this prosperity now also we see that so many labors are migrated they don't want to come back to the work so in this whole scenario you know i see that we need more and more people who can be a contributing member for the country yeah and somewhere we also need to do the micro level management so one point i was discussing we recently had a msme programs and i was saying that we used to have this model where each city was known for their own products like chennapattam was famous for the toys mysore was famous for the sandalwood you go to kutch they are famous for all their embroideries yeah. so this branding this help us a lot of branding and this is what china is doing right now suppose you go to one area and then you see all the plastic industry the other area you see all the electronic industry so this branding can help us because india is also so diversified and so big so if we can earmark the areas and if we can make it more popular and we need to take our industries to the to the b cities or even c cities you know the concentration of the industry is also a challenge because these labors you know if we can give them employments in their own cities people can go to you know bastars and patnas and muzaffarnagar and these are like small cities and we can set up the industry yeah so then more and more places will people will get the employments so here we can combine our skill india movements with it digital india movements with this make in india i would say make in india is is even a small 
a very old concept. What China used to do 20 years before, we are, we are copying China right now after 20 years. What is China doing right now? China is doing make in world. They are outright buying out the lands in different parts of the world. They are sending their um, you know, workforce to the different parts. They said, okay, you go and do all the production and we'll buy back and we supply to the whole world. And here we are just struggling to set up the industry in our own countries. So here again, I would say that we need to expand. The quantity of the population is not a problem. Quality of population is a problem. If we can train our youth force into, you know, multilinguals, like, you know, we can teach them uh, French and we can teach them, you know, Germans and, you know, um, all the other languages and we can systematically outsource our manpower. Yeah, because I see and I've traveled uh, in all this 25 years to so many countries and I, when I go to this country, there the whole generation is, is missing. So the, the countries like Germany or uh, France, they had to change the social security laws because they don't have young generations. So these countries need people to run their own countries. I remember in 60s when uh, after the Second World War, when the entire Germany was destroyed, they got all these labels from India. And if you look at these labels, they are so well off now in Germany. Yeah. So this is what is needed right now. You know, here we need to have this kind of a policies. You know, this this needs a policy formulation, policy decisions. So what we need to do with this country, you know, with so much of manpower, so much of knowledge that we have. How can we systematically export our knowledge and manpower? That will bring the prosperity to the country. Yeah. So here, the peace and prosperity, we can give the solution to the whole world. Like India was a global power. You know, you know in, in, the, in the first century, we can again be a global power. But if we can use our own knowledge and if we can have a confidence that using our own knowledge and our own people, we can come up in this world. We can give solution to the world. And that is, I think, the way to the peace and prosperity, according to my views.